Hello and welcome to Michelle Holden Art, where we discover our true art, our authentic art, one layer at a time. And this week, I'm going to be exploring with multiples. I'm going to be using one large sheet that I've um, measured out 16 five by seven um, sections for small abstracts. And I love working this way because of the repetition. Um, I get to see uh, subtle changes as to um, altering a layer or a mark and just to see the effects of those at the end. Um, it's also a great way to be more productive. And um, you have a sort of a mini series. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, it's important that you, in this intuitive art journaling practice, to self-reflect about what works, what doesn't work, your intentions, and I have a self-reflection PDF for you to download. And also, if you didn't check out last week's video, I used art prompts, and I also have a PDF of those for you free. Uh, so you just need to sign up, and it's a good idea to sign up because I have a lot of new things coming out. And so join my email, which comes out twice a month, and so let's get these, uh, the video started. Let's get creating. So here it is, my new station. Um, I wasn't using this station a lot because of my lighting, but I think I took care of it by uh, two sets of studio lights, the big large ones that extend, and wow, is it ever nice and bright along with the natural light coming in. So I hope I don't have too many shadows. And here is the large watercolor uh, paper, and that's why I moved to this station. And I will be working here in the future when I show you how to take your art process from your art journal, moving it into multiples, going forward, to different substrates like wood panels and canvases and and more and and large so stick with me um, and on this journey as we um, explore play and discover and grow okay And so what, I guess what uh, artists call this is activating the substrate. And what it is, is just, it just gets you into a flow. And I know that in the end, these will be in the very, very background and they'll be covered a lot with uh, the different transparent whites or opaques or whatever layers I choose to use. And it just adds that subtlety in the end. And some will just be totally, totally veiled. So it doesn't matter. 
It's just another layer. This is a water-soluble graphite, and I like how it gets smudgy. And I'm just thinking differences. The difference that I'm thinking now is direction. While I'm doing it, I'll, uh, see, I'm liking that, so I'm gonna stick with that. So there's the repetition. I notice, if you didn't notice, if you go super fast, it, it gives the mark a different energy. But if you slow down and lose control, like maybe using my left, and see that little direction there. I want them to be similar, but I don't want them to be the same, of course. And I want them in a different location. And when you go past the edges onto the other one, it, it really is an interesting effect. don't think I want to add the water, but I will use the brayer. And it does a surprising, unexpected type of mark and then lifts off any, that's interesting there. Makes them more smudgy while lifting the water. Under okay. Hmm. okay, all right. So let's dry this. Okay, so we won't use the dryer, just because I remembered I changed the extension cord and it doesn't reach as far, but I will do that for the next segment. So, you just let this air dry, and then we're going to move on to a very scratchy kind of mark that I know I'm going to veil next, or push back. And I really want to try this crazy little dollar store item, which is, it, it, it really has no flexibility at all, but I know it's going to have a scratchy kind of, of mark, and it's all in how I, how I move this tool around, and that's what I want to explore. So this is a paint palette. And I like using that at times too, not always the glass, because in the end, I like to have some nice layering and use it, this page, as, uh, as collage. Oh, and that's another thing we're going to do. We're gonna do some mono printing. You see, I didn't plan it, I forgot about it, and then just, just getting that idea now 
It's going to be so cool. All right. So, so it's going to be dry. No water at all. I have no idea what's going to happen. And I'm really looking forward to the surprise. And it will be noisy, but I, I'll speed this up and turn the sound down while you're watching. So I'm back. Uh, I found the extension cord underneath this table, and now I'm able to thoroughly dry this layer. Okay. So while I'm drying, of course, I'm thinking, okay, do I want to push back this layer alone, or do I want a higher contrast of black in with it um, and my conclusion was I think I want to push some of it back first and that's when you use your color shaper okay. for my um, pushing back or my white layer I like to use it's trans more of a transparent mixing white from Liquitex I'm using it dry, of course, and I'm not going to cover the whole, the whole thing. I just want to push back some elements. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see everything like that. And as you can see, I hope, uh, probably these ones right in front. And I will go a little closer while I'm showing you this. Okay, so right here, and I love how I continue the mark across so it'll, the eye will be extended, but this is exactly where I like to veil. Now, veiling, I'm not completely covering it up. I'm only veiling part of it. This line would look good veil. See too much. And then you just change the angle of your color shaper. Leaving that. Down. Oh. Okay. I've gone off the page, but below I'm covering just the pencil and I'm leaving the last layer. Right here, lower left corner. And I'm choosing a different area just because I'm not, you know, I've not built up built up enough ex experience in um, knowing which, you know, and then I don't want to know anyway because I'm just using my following my instincts. So I'll just back out a bit, and I'm going to finish here. And this is just one veiling layer. I usually come in with a few veiling layers. OK. 
Okay. All right. So I think I will dry that layer. And so far we're on pencil, china marker, scratchy tool, veil layer, so we veil layer, so we have four layers. Okay. So what I usually do is add one more high contrasted area and let's see. I think I'm going to use a stencil, but one that I haven't used a lot. It's sort of, uh, it's sort of tech, sort of technology, uh, sort of the repetition, um, sort of a high tech kind of feel. So this will definitely have a huge influence on the piece, on all the pieces, the 16 pieces. And I am just going to use a dry brush. And of course I'm going to overlap carry over to the next one and just put a little in each corner and that's all I want that um, and so let's see what happens Interesting. And I notice the drier your brush is, the crisper your edges are. So you want to be careful. Now I know this is the fluid paint, which is a little risky, but it's been sitting on the palette for a bit. So it's it went under the edges. You see, I got the bleeding, which whatever, I'm not going to worry about because we're just exploring right now. So I've gone that way, so I might want to turn and go some different directions. I'm changing my technique here as my brush dries out and it's better. sort of like scumbling but through a ten through a stencil and I want the black here because I like this and that's just my first response hmm. and as you progress in your practice You'll learn what you like, uh, what works and what doesn't work. So where there's more black, if you notice, that's where I'm putting the stencil. Just so the contrast isn't like blatantly black and white. And it, I think it helps. So repetition, repeated pattern. So this is the patterning part of it. You might want to use different tools for your stenciling, like proper, uh, I've used makeup sponges. They work really well too. Uh, but right now, this was the closest tool and that's what I'm using.
So I'm liking the lighter ones up there for some reason with this particular stencil. Sort of that, they're there, they're just, just very still transparent. I really love transparency. I don't know what it is, and I think that's what really got me into this process or develop, developing my process. How can I get more transparency through collage, through any kind of layer? because it's the, uh, the use of simple shapes, simple marks, but put together in many different layers, um, you just never know what's gonna ha what you're gonna end up with. This one here needs a little more. Mm, I like just going vertical, I think I'll repeat that. So when you're stenciling, you don't need to use, of course, the whole thing. You can use, use aspects of the stencil that you, are really speaking to you, like this strip here. Now I'm, I'm responding to what I discovered there, would never have, dis, you know, would have thought of that. And now I'm gonna do more of that particular direction. I might switch directions. Oh yeah, that's cool. Overlapping is very important as well. Hmm. Now, I'm not going to do this to all of them, but this is really cool. And you might want to make sure it's squared off or not diagonal. It can be slightly off, but not a lot, I think. You might not. Everybody has their own opinions. There we go. Yeah, I'm really liking this. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this smudginess and go with... No, it's matched up. There you are. I think that's good. So let's dry this layer. Okay. There is one little bit of mark making, which I think would contrast. Well, we have scratchy. Now we have real geometric shapes. So what a great difference. Now, what else do we need? Should I push back some of those? Hmm. Well, we don't have, but well, we have some pencil line. Hmm. I think we'll veil. One more veiling layer.
and I'm just doing it random. I'm really, I look at this section and whatever I think, and I'm not really covering, I notice the real, the line of shapes, that pattern. So I'm really liking that. So I'm taking the busyness out of it by veiling the previous layer and not the whole thing either. That's standing out too much, so see how you can, there we go. So I'm lessening the contrast, but not too much, because I know there's many layers to come, which would be opaque layers of paint, opaque collage, and some transparent collage. So let's dry this layer. Okay, so, I just remembered that I did mention mono printing and of course my stamping of circles. I think I'm going to use a shape this time. And this is just a piece of the cardboard, uh, the tube, and I don't even know. Oh yeah, probably some packing material. So I'm gonna just apply paint on this edge and I just want to make sure I overlap, overlap in different sections. So there's just an indication of a circle there. So now another difference. See how these are small shapes? Now this is going to be large. So I'm really liking that difference. A drip. Well, that's given me another idea. More than a spatter, an actual good drip, which would really make a nice contrast after I work with this. Okay, so Notice I'm carrying that on. It's overlapping four different pieces. I'm liking that idea. I'm not gonna do that all around, change it up. I'm loving that. So it's really fun to, um, while I'm doing this, um, we've used this tool, I use lids, um, I look at the recycling stuff in a totally different way, and um, I've had to throw away stuff because I was accumulating way too much, especially packing materials, Amazon stuff. Um, there's so much foam but I, I don't really use the foam at all. I used to, but uh, I, I tend to, I don't want my approach being too crafty. Um, 
because I like to think of this intuitive art journaling process or practice as sort of a gateway to understanding and moving forward with abstract art. And that's sort of my purpose for it. It's not just to end up with this beautiful art journal, which is beautiful, um, but it is a, sort of a reference and a, a building, if you will, of experiences, marks, uh, and discoveries so that you can um, move forward with um, abstract art. Because abstract art, I believe, is amazing. So I don't want to put too many, but I do want a circle mark on each one. Just different. Yes, yes. Okay, I think I want something there that's bigger. Okay, this I'm not liking there anyway but we are going to come in oh smudging smudge oh there we go now we got a good lift there okay um i don't think i want to go too crazy with these less is more right okay all right so i'm going to put that to the side and i think we'll dry them I don't want it smudging. I'm really liking the marks that it's left. I don't know, for some reason, I just think it needed something more up there. Okay, so we're not going to veil the circles because, if you notice, see how much forward they are um, on each piece? Just because they're, they're darker, it's the higher contrast. And when you do push and those uh, push those layers behind, those look way, way behind and uh, it has a really wonderful feel to it. So I'm just gonna let these air dry and then we'll be back for the last part of part one. And I might take them apart at this stage or I might wait until next week. Um, I'm learning that not getting into collaging too soon in the process uh, is better. But now, now that um, the fear or the self-doubt self of covering something up is uh, lessening, um, you get braver for just putting anything down and then letting it go and covering it no matter what. Uh, so you'll find that changes as you um, as you get more into your intuitive art journaling practice. So we'll let these dry and we'll see you in the next segment. Okay, so now, most likely for the last layer of this phase before I take them all apart. And I have two, I'm thinking two, two, path, two paths to choose. I was thinking, wow, why not add, why not stick with the black and white and use this piece of collage, which was created with, what is this stuff? I think this is tissue paper or it could be tracing paper. And then <clears throat> using a catalyst wedge, the toothed one, Sorry, I keep going back and forth to my other station. <laughs> That's where everything is. Like this, just horizontal, and then letting that dry, and then coming in 
with the fine line maker. And also you could go and make some fine lines at this point, which would be interesting and knowing that the line really um, uh, is quite thick or dimensional because it, it stays, it stays above the substrate. It doesn't soak in, which is really cool. And you could go white on black or black on white. And why I'm liking this piece is because there's a lot of black on white and this is white on black, plus it's transparent. The same reason why I think pieces of these would look really cool but I'm not sure if I want to put them in, put them on at this stage. Also, just some transparent um, or translucent collage, just with the lines. And then this one is the palette paper. And you see how it's just slightly, it's more opaque but tearing the edge and going this way would, you see how it goes with the line and the energy, matching directionality, linking those two, those pieces together that way. So I think I'll demonstrate and why using multi, um, uh, many, uh, like si at least 16 is a lot. This is where you can experiment with the different types of collage layer and the different uh, meaning opaque color, uh, transparent, uh, small, uh, large, that kind of thing. And then, of course, on the back of each of these, which I will show you in the end. So please come on back. Uh, join me again for part two and most likely part three of this little mini series working or exploring with multiples. Um, for some reason, this looks really good right here. I think I might. It's just this swir this direction of that pencil line. Not even that, not even because you can see it. I just really like it. So I'm going to put that in. This one is much larger. I think I want to tear it a little bit more. I don't want something breaking through. So each phase, you'll find there's a different approach. Yes, we're still using our intuition, following our gut, just because I'm just doing this and just seeing, oh, wow, the placement of that is really cool. And that's where it is. And that's where it's going to go. You can partially see if I was to choose something with a higher contrast underneath. I don't know. Yeah, you can see, you can see how you can see the, the, the rectangles underneath there slightly. And that's what attracts me. So I'm going to square off that corner. Okay, that's going to go there. And Totally forgotten about the white. Now this has a little blue in it and of course I want to use my paint side up and look how cool that is. So I'm going to cut these up and I am going to go with a layer of transparent collage as my pencil that veil stencil veil. Wow, six, seventh layer now. Okay, and I like to cut them up 
in groups. Or in a line. So some will have these, possibly, or I might wait till the next layer. I'm still, I think I'm gonna stick with these and I'm just gonna tear them. Tearing is great. And also finding the direction of your paper, your fibers. I feel it's more random right now. I don't want to get too precious too early. That's the other mistake that we, we tend to do. Mm, nice, but I don't like that. Okay. And you want to place your transparent collage over something of high contrast so you can really see the underlying layer. Oh, that's it right there. Okay. So there's a lot more to work with here. And I'm being careful just to bring the collage to the edge of the tape because I know um, even though you do score it with an X-Acto knife before you remove the tape, there can be some tearing, but no big deal. And maybe not every piece will get a piece of collage at this point. Oh, see the direction here? See how you can see that's a diagonal and here is a vertical. So they're contrasting, they're the energy, they're meeting. So I, I like that. So I'm gonna put that in there. Okay. So for the tissue paper or the tracing paper, and remember, uh, and deli wrap. So I use three different transparent uh, layers. So far I've discovered those. I do have tea bag paper and I have artist tissue paper and some other papers that I haven't even used yet. I purchased them. They're just sort of in storage for now. When I have more time to play around, I will dig them out and have some fun with those. As I was saying, so I'm going to use the more fluid gloss medium. It's a little gentler on the tissue paper or this tracing paper, which tears easily. And I'm going to use a clean brush. Make sure your layers underneath are thoroughly dry so you don't get the smudging when you're applying your, your medium. Notice I'm picking up those lines. Love it. See, there's bubbling here, but once you apply that medium, it just melts away. That's the coolest thing.
And you want a really good layer of these to, I think. Especially if it's this stuff. I use the heavy, it's good to use the heavy gel medium for the thicker collage and of course, heavier papers. Okay, I think I'm enjoying this, so I'm just gonna keep tearing and speed this part up while you watch. So I'm using a soft brush for this, and I've learned, I used to tear these pieces a lot. So I'm just learning to be a little more gentle. Oh, you see how these lines match? So now I'm gonna do sort of some overlapping there. Okay, so I think that is enough layers. So we have about seven or eight layers now 
for our first phase. And I'm going to let this stay together and dry thoroughly before I take the tape off. And then for part two, so come on back for next week and continue watching this little mini series of exploring with multiples um, because of repetition. You can see what happens. You can experiment with, um, oh, I like this sequence. Uh, I like how I placed how this turned out because of maybe the direction of the line, etc. So I will be taking them apart next week and then we'll be going into adding uh, our color and some more collage and some text. So I hope you enjoyed part one. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also hop on to my, my mailing list, uh, my, my email that comes out, my, my email that comes out twice a month, your self-reflection um, PDF, and also your uh, selection of art prompts. So there's lots more coming out very soon. And I will see you in the next video.